California and I was raised by my father, my grandparents on my father's side and um, my sister. My mother was always in and out of my life since I was about three or two. Um, my father and her separated and it wasn't until I got older that I learned why they separated and why she was never in my life. For a, a long time, I thought it was because my father didn't like her because that's how it was. Every time she would come by, he, he would run away. He was never around. If she was around, he was gone. He would leave. And it wasn't until I moved away and got older that I found out that my mother was on drugs. And after I found that out, it, it all clicked together. Like I knew it made so much sense. Every time I would see her, she was just not all there. And I don't think when I would see her every time she was on drugs, but you can just tell it's not the same person. I moved to Tucson when I was eight years old in 2005. And I remember my mother last words to me and my sister were how could you leave me my grandmother from my dad's side is the light of my life she helped raise me when she didn't need to when my mom walked out of the picture she helped so much really anything a mom should do she did the first time I knew something was wrong with me or something was weird or off about me was around seven to eight years old. I was um, playing with my siblings and my mother at one of her friend's house. And we were all playing, having such a great time. And then... I stopped playing. I walked over to the room right across from right where we were playing. I sat at the doorway and cried. I waited about five minutes before I started crying, but I cried because nobody noticed that I was gone when I was the one who walked away. And I cried because I watched everyone have so much fun without me. But I was the one who stopped playing. It didn't make sense to me at the time. I, I didn't know why I was crying. I think I was in middle school. When I started to learn what depression and bipolar and all of that stuff is. And then... I realized that I had it, but I didn't really want to tell anybody because I didn't think anyone would believe me, mainly my family. My family is more like, you're independent, you do this by yourself, you got this, you're so brave. Everyone in my family was like that. Not just to me, to my sister, to my cousins. So me telling them that I feel sad all the time and I don't know why, they would just take it as a joke. But I remember I was sitting in my room reading this textbook that my teacher had given us, checking off stuff that I had. I knew I had it. I knew that was me.
it wasn't until the end of the first semester of college that I decided to go to a mental health screening in the HLC and I was diagnosed with depression, bipolar disorder, and anxiety. After that, I went to a few meetings, um, counseling, I went to counseling, and then something happened. The next few meetings after the horrible thing, I was diagnosed with PTSD. It was finals week or no, reading week, one or the other. At the end of second semester, my freshman year, and I had my fourth and last suicide attempt. To cut the long story short, paramedics came, police came, and I was escorted out of the dorm, and they took me to the hospital where I stayed from, I believe it was 9 o'clock to about 3 in the morning. I don't exactly remember when I told my sister. I know it was on the phone, but I finally told her what had happened that night that led up to the hospital. hospital. And I just remember her crying so much. And yelling, not at me. But at what happened to me. So, I remember you telling me about what happened to you over the phone. And I should be talking to you. <laughs> I just, I felt really angry, like so much hate inside of me because I just wanted to make things better for you and I was just so, so mad that I couldn't be there to help you because I feel like if I was there and I was sleeping in that room, I would have known, I would have felt something was wrong with you and I would have helped you. So it just makes me so mad that I wasn't there. And it makes me so mad that we weren't as close as we were. Mary Jane told me about her hospital experience. And she was, of course, crying. And I felt happiness because she was still alive and she was telling me. And I didn't feel mad at her because you can't be mad at someone for being sad. That's just wrong. So there was no point to me to be mad. I just felt happy that she was still here and she has a second chance to try. And I felt like I should try to do more to help her too because some people you just can't do it alone so I know she had friends and you know she had my dad and she had people around her and me and her had kind of drifted apart so I thought maybe it was time that I get more involved in her life again and and try because she needs me. 
I stopped taking my medication about two weeks ago. And I've been doing pretty good. I just, in a way, taking medications is draining. I don't want to have to be on a, a pill or pills to make me feel how everyone else feels. I don't want to have to have something balance me out just, just to be able to get out of bed. Just to be able to walk my dog without overthinking and being stressed all the time. I just want to feel normal. I know that this probably is not the last time that I'm going to go on and off of medication. I know when I'm older, I'll probably just go back on a medication and stick to it. I just wish I didn't have to. But I hope in the future it gets easier. And I hope I'm a bit happier. I don't know how or anything, but I just, I hope 